This episode is brought to you by Omaha Steaks. Dog Pack, Memorial Day is almost here, and that means it's time to get fired up for grilling season. So sweep off your deck, throw back the grill cover, and fire up the mouth-watering flavor of Omaha Steaks when you go to omahasteaks.com slash dogs and get 50% off site-wide with Omaha Steaks Memorial Day sale. That's 50% off everything Omaha Steaks has to offer, not just the steaks, which are absolutely incredible, but they've also got awesome Jumbo Franks, brats, chicken, seafood. They've got pork. They've got appetizers. I just ordered a bunch of meatballs and chicken wings for my freezer to get ready for grilling season. So head over to omahasteaks.com slash dogs and see what they have to offer. This is a great opportunity to get a great deal on great food. omahasteaks.com slash dogs, 50% off site-wide Memorial Day sale and use promo code DOGS, D-A-W-G-S, when you check out. You'll get an extra $30 off your order. Omaha Steaks isn't just steak. It's the best steak of your life, guaranteed. So load up on all the summer classics for half the price at omahasteaks.com slash dogs. And don't forget to use our promo code DOGS, D-A-W-G-S, when you check out and get that extra $30 off your order. You got to hurry. The Memorial Day sale will be gone before you know it. That's omahasteaks.com slash dogs, promo code DOGS, when you check out for an extra $30 off your order. Minimum order may be required. Welcome to the Dogs Podcast with your hosts, Blake Reniker, Justin Charles, and Josh All. What's up, Browns fans? Welcome back to another episode of the Dogs Podcast presented by Omaha Steaks. Josh all alone with you guys, and I've got a very special episode ready for you guys. You're not going to want to miss this one. We have got Browns rookie linebacker Nathaniel Buki Watson on the show today. We'll be talking to him about his experience with rookie minicamp and just coming into the NFL and some you know discussions about his time in college at Mississippi State. He did some pretty incredible things while he was in college, and I'm not just talking about on the football field. So we will dive into all that. But before we do, just want to make sure you guys, if you're watching on YouTube, please like the video, subscribe to the channel, tap the notification bell. We are getting very close to 10,000 subscribers, and we really appreciate everybody supporting the show and subscribing to the channel. And if you're listening on Apple Podcasts, again, like I keep telling you guys, and you guys are following through, I appreciate it. Please scroll to the bottom of the page, leave us a five-star written review, just a quick comment in there. Great show. Awesome Browns content. Love these guys. Whatever. I mean, you could say the show sucks if you really think so. But at the end of the day, the five star written reviews really help get our podcast in front of more Browns fans like you guys. And that's what we're trying to do. So today's episode, I just want to talk a little bit about Nathaniel. And I will call him that right now up until the interview. But after that, it is straight Buki from there. Nathaniel Watson, he was the Browns sixth round pick in the the draft just last month and just looking at some of his well first of all he's six foot two 233 pounds big if you've seen any of the uh videos from training camp or the rookie mini camp him out on the field yes i know these guys are just in helmets and and shorts and whatever but this is a big linebacker and the way he's got some speed he can move he's going to be very exciting to watch this season. So I just want to go through some stats and we'll just talk about the last couple years. In 2022, he had 113 total tackles, 12 tackle for loss, six sacks and an interception. And then in 2023, just this past season, he went even higher on that 137 tackles, 13 tackle for loss, 10 sacks and another interception. He had 21 sacks over the last three seasons in college. The dude can get after the quarterback. And so I just want to talk about a couple things about Buki Watson. Uh, This comes from Barry Shuck's article on Dogs by Nature, breaking down uh, the Browns rookie linebacker. I'll just read the scouting report real quick. This is from the Draft Network. It says, Mississippi State's Nathaniel Watson enters the draft after a sensational career that saw him develop into one of the best and most productive linebackers in college football. Watson is a six-year senior who has played a ton of football. He aligned as an off-the-ball linebacker in the Bulldogs' 3-3-5 defense, and that's where he projects best at the next level. But we talked to him about that, and... This guy can play every single linebacker position because he's already done it throughout his college career. So we do talk about that. 
It says, uh, it continues on, Watson is a well-built linebacker with a good size and excellent length. He is an above-average athlete who is a smooth mover in space but lacks quick twitch and explosive movements. Watson is a good player in his own coverage, displaying a good ability to get depth in his drops. He shows good awareness of backs and receivers entering into his area. He is an instinctive player in coverage and naturally can flow to the football by reading the quarterback's eyes. I can't wait for you guys to hear the interview because... His excitement and enthusiasm to be part of the Cleveland Browns, to be part of this Jim Schwartz defense, just radiates off of him. It's it's a ton of fun. Before we dive into the interview, I just want to go through Buki Watson's career honors through his college career because the list is extensive. And uh, as long as Barry didn't leave anything off the list, I don't want to leave anything off the list. So... NFL Combine Participant, 2024 Reese's Senior Bowl Participant, 2024 East-West Shrine Bowl Invitee, 2023 SEC Fall Academic Honor Roll, 2023 Phil Steele All-American Third Team, 2023 Phil Steele All-SEC First Team, 2023 ESPN All-American Second Team, 2023 AP All-American Third Team, 2023 All-SEC First Team, 2023 AP SEC Defensive Player of the Year, that's the big one. He was the SEC Defensive Player of the Year, led the entire conference in tackles, and was just, wow, did he ever wreak havoc on the SEC. He was the 2023 AP All-SEC First Team, 2023 College Football Network All-American Second Team, 2023 College Football Network All-SEC First Team, 2023 Butkus Award Finalist, Best Linebacker Award in all of college. So he was a finalist for that award. 2023 Walter Camp Defensive Player of the Week, which was Week 12 versus Southern Miss. 2023 SEC Defensive Player of the Week, that was also Week 12 versus Southern Miss. 2023 Connerly Trophy Finalist, 2023 Butkus Award Semifinalist, 2023 Bednarek Award National Defensive Player of the Week in Week 8 versus Arkansas. I'm almost done, guys. We're getting there. 2023 SEC Defensive Player of the Week in Week 8 at Arkansas. 2023 Bronco Nagariski Trophy Watch List. 2023 Preseason All-SEC. 2023 Preseason All-SEC. That's from the media. 2022 Second Team All-SEC. 2022 SEC Academic Honor Roll and SEC Academic Honor Roll in 2020 as well. Buki Watson is a very exceptional young man. He uh, He's done great things throughout college. As I mentioned earlier, I mean, on the field, off the field, in the classroom, he's very impressive. And I really, I'm, I'm excited for him to be on the team. If you guys have watched the show, you know that when the draft wrapped up, you know, a few weeks ago in April, I came out of the weekend very excited about the entire draft class, but I was just over the moon about drafting Nathaniel Watson in the sixth round. I just, I was like, I can't believe we, I can't believe we got Buki Watson. I'm so excited to have him on the team. And, you know, after the interview, I'm sure you guys will feel the same if you're not already there with me, but I really do believe that he has a chance to, you know, step into a very large contributing role early on in his career this year in 2024 and make a big impact on the field. So, I have rambled enough. I've talked enough about him. I'm going to go ahead and kick it over to the interview, and then we will wrap things up when we're done. All right. So like I said in the intro, I am joined by new Browns rookie linebacker, Nathaniel Watson. And that is the last time that I'm going to call you that because if I've been following everything correctly, and you just told me I did say it right, it's not Nathaniel, it's not Nate, it's Buki, right? Yes, sir. Buki. (laughs) Buki. So I was doing some reading about this. And I didn't get the full story, so I kind of want to know, where did Buki come from? Because I see that your dad was big Buki, right? Yeah. And you I mean, were, it was just... What's that? I was a little Buki. Little Buki. It was just Buki. I was a little Buki growing up. And then, uh, like, after a while, I got big, so everybody just started calling me Buki. And he started going by Nate. So, yeah, that's how it really... I, I, don't, I never got to ask him, um, like, where the nickname came from. He passed away to uh, COVID and... Uh, 2021. I'm so really I never got to ask. So I never got to ask him then. I always forget to ask my mom where it came from. So I just I just go along with it. So well, yeah, that's pretty cool that he was Buki and then you became Buki after you know just kind of passed on to you. I I think that's really neat. Um, so we we've talked to a couple other guys from rookie minicamp, which 
You guys just finished that up. We talked to tight end Trayton Welch just a couple of days ago. One thing that I wanted to ask you about. So Trayton mentioned probably three or four times that the ultimate goal for the team is to win the Super Bowl. So I'm just curious, man, like how early did the team instill that priority with you guys during the mini camp? Well, I mean, it really always been like our dream, like as a rookie to come in and win the Super Bowl. They really, it really just uh, one of big, like big factor right here. They always talk about the next step and obviously the next step is to win the Super Bowl. So, I mean, they really did uh, um, install it too much, but you know, there's everybody like goal and like everybody around the facility they want to win a Super Bowl. So, yeah. That's really cool. I mean, we've heard that from multiple players now. It just seems like that we've talked a lot in the past years as the Browns have shifted the culture within the team because, you know, for, for decades, it just that the team was not a very winning organization, but it seems like we've got the right front office. We've got the right coaches in there. And now we're getting all, I mean, the roster is stacked and you are a big piece of that, in my opinion. And I guess, what is your reaction to being drafted into a defense that's coordinated by Jim Schwartz? Uh, it's really, like, really awesome because I, I came from a defense that was aggressive and played a lot of man coverage and blitz. So um, I really ain't changed too much. Just now I got, like, you know, Miles Garrett in front of me. So that's really, <laughs> really, that's really the biggest takeaway from it. Uh, so, yeah, I, I just look forward to playing for him. He a hell of a coach um, from – from uh, the first time I got here, uh, when we had Ricky Mini started Ricky Mini Camp, he just I can just tell by our energy that he give out like positive vibes and that he want to win. So yeah, yeah, I know I, you mentioned Miles Garrett. I saw an interview with you right where you were kind of talking about being starstruck by some of these guys yeah, that nah. are on this roster, right? So Miles uh, is one yeah. of those dudes. Um, I'm guessing what like Deshaun and Nick Chubb and some of these other guys too. Yeah, most definitely. Yeah, I, I definitely remember watching Nick Chubb at Georgia, just like. All because I played running back a little bit in high school, so just watching this highlight, I remember watching all that. My out here, the shine wise, and uh, bro, I don't want to be like them guys, <laughs> and I'm actually like teammates with them, so yeah, that's kind of crazy. That That is crazy, and I mean, I personally, and, and, and this is not a slight to any of the other guys that we drafted, you know, back last month, but when the Browns picked you, I, I was like, man, this, this is awesome. I was probably the most excited about you as the, you know, being a draft pick for the Browns, because there's just a, there's a big opportunity at linebacker and just going back and looking at your college production and everything that you accomplished, I was like, man, I cannot believe we got this guy. Like you, <laughs> your college career was very impressive. Yeah. I appreciate it. I appreciate it. Man. Yeah. So, I mean, I'm, I'm glad to be here. So, yeah, that's great to hear. Uh, last year, you know, I was kind of watching some other interviews with you and, you know, you had talked about, thinking about declaring after 2022, but you said you didn't feel like you were ready. Uh, looking at the production, I mean, it seemed like you kind of had the stats to warrant being drafted. I, I think you probably would have been, but you know, what, what was it, 113 tackles, 12 tackle for loss, six sacks and an interception. But what were the main things that you wanted to focus on and improve on in that final year of college? Um, Really like, a, really like the reason I came back was because I didn't think I was ready for like the um the lead. So I just wanted to come back. Just uh like sharpen up on a few things, like getting off blogs more. That's on the like on the field stuff, like getting off blogs, working on my coverage skills more. So really just working all that and then like off the field, I just wanted to um get better at being a vocal leader, you know, um trying to um boost other boost other teammates to play up to my capability or surpass my capability just the just so we all like have fun out of so yeah that's i mean that's really cool i mean so six years in college and i mean the covid year had something to do with that right yeah um but i again looking into you you didn't waste any time you got two degrees while you were in college an undergrad yeah. and a master so i guess just talk to me a little bit about the commitment that it takes because i know football by itself is demanding college by itself is very demanding and you didn't just do both. You like dominated both. So just tell me about your mindset over those six years and what drove you to not just excel on the football field, but also in the classroom. Uh, really? I ain't gonna lie to you. My first year, I was just in college just to have fun. Hey, so was I. I know all about <laughs> <Yeah>. that. <laughs> I was just, I was just having fun. I really wasn't paying too much attention, like football <laughs> stuff. I, I had older heads in front of me. So I mean, I probably would have played, but I know I won't get that much playing time. So I just said, 
But yeah, I'm just enjoying my first year of college down the lock now. So like after that year, um, I was just like, I saw other players, I saw other linebackers get drafted and stuff. I was like, oh, I probably actually got a shot at uh, going to the league. Because, you know, like, everybody can promise the lead in college. He probably, he promised to go to college, but everybody promised to go to the league. So I was like, Let me, if I lock in, I can probably get up to the league. And then on the side of, like, education, I mean, that was always the goal. Mom, mom, Duke Grimes, sister, they always wanted me to get my undergrad. And once I got my undergrad and I still had, like, two two more years, I was like, I might as well go for my master's. But when I had went for my master's, I wasn't planning on coming back for the six year. I, that's why I had did it so fast, try to get it, try to get it all knocked out. So yeah, but it really just, um, if I had to tell like younger people, it just, you got to find your balance when it comes to like studying your plays and then doing work. And for me personally, uh, my balance was really working out in the morning, uh, getting everything done. And then nighttime, I was just grinding out. Work, work, do it, complete as much like homework and stuff as I can. Cause I was, I was all online, so I really didn't have too much to do in class. So, but yeah. Yeah. I, that is the one thing about, I mean, just college in general, you got to find that routine because for most people, it's the first time you're really like on your own. Now, you, you know, yeah. so you were not on campus right away. Is that what you're saying? No, I was on campus. I just like, I, I wouldn't like, after COVID, I went on campus, but like my okay. second, 2019, I was on campus and then after COVID, that's when I just locked in and like, shit. I, gotcha. I, yeah. Uh, Cause I know like my freshman year in college, I, I was, I did really well in high school. I was like 4.0 student and everything, but I never had to study. It was just, I don't know. School was just easy in high school and I got to college and then I was immediately on academic probation. I had no idea what I was doing. I'm like, I, I don't know how to study. I don't know how to, I guess, <laughs> be responsible for myself. So I had to definitely grow up pretty quick but i got there too <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. so um yeah so you stayed in college then for last season 2023 and i mean impressive you led the sec in tackles 137 13 tackle for loss 10 sacks and we know we all know the sec is always full of nfl talent and you just dominated that conference so you ended the season i believe with two straight games with 21 tackles in each game yeah yeah that, i don't know where that came from it's <laughs> It's just crazy. <laughs> I still, I still, when I think back on it, I'd be like, dang, I really did that. But yeah, I couldn't even tell you where I came from. Just got to thank the Lord for putting me in that, uh, that position to be able to uh, manage all that. So yeah. Yeah. Amen. I, well, that was going to be my next kind of question is what do you remember about that? But I, it, cause it's insane. I look at that and it's like 21 tackles. That is just incredible. And you did it two weeks in a row. <laughs> just, yeah. Wow. With a bomb knee, so oh, yeah, really? yeah, I had a bomb knee, so yeah, that's that's the crazy part. Don't know, don't nobody know nothing about that, but yeah. <laughs> so I guess so. Um, I, I didn't really find anything about this. Did you ever miss any games in college with like injuries or anything? Because it, it seemed uh, like you played pretty much every game. I played every game up to um, I think it was twenty one. Twenty one, I missed one game. And that was the Memphis game. I had an ankle injury, but other than that, I got played through. Every, I played through down to every injury I had. So yeah. <laughs> I was going to say, because you don't rack up tackles the way you did uh, missing games. So, no, nah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, oh, my goal. I try my best not to miss no games because me, uh, me and my Padre, Jed Johnson, we always had a look. Well, everybody made it seem like it was a bit, but it was just our friendly competition on seeing who we had the most tackles. So, yeah. <laughs> That's cool, man. It's both but better. So, yeah. Yeah, that's yeah. what you got to do. You know, those, those like friendly competitions to. Yeah, yeah. Keep each other accountable and, and build each other up. I love that. Um, yeah. So, like, I guess, what else about mini camp, rookie mini camp, stood out to you with the, you know, just with the the Browns or the NFL in general, some of the other rookies coming in, the coaches, the front office. What was your overall impression coming from college into now the professional side of football? Uh, really, just how everything works. You know, um, the lead. They say the lead move fast and like. Firsthand, like it actually do move fast. <laughs> it's really it's, it's it moves fast when you don't know what you when you don't know the plays and stuff. When you just learn to play, but after, like you get to play down, it's the same ball. It's like SEC ball, like it just well like college ball. I'm saying I say it just SEC, but yeah. like college, you just playing ball. You've been playing ball your whole life, so I mean it really it really speeds up. And then when you get everything, that's when you just start going in a straight line. And then um, but like the other thing. 
I say like um like Vince and second year they doing a really good job, but like helping the young guys out like us really good coming in and they they showing us the ropes, um having us like having us around and stuff, and they they out they be out there practice with us, just running some of the drills with us. So they really just showing us how our practice gonna flow throughout the season and stuff. So I mean that's really helpful. That that's awesome to hear because you know I've heard from other players just just in reading and things like that that the transition from college to the NFL is. It can be pretty difficult because tell me if I'm if I'm getting this correctly, but in college, a lot of your trainings and workouts and things are kind of more scheduled. You've got class schedules and things like that to kind of keep you on track. And in the professional side of things, I've heard it's just kind of when you're not with the team and there's not stuff going on, it's kind of up to you what you do and if you're going to train or not, if you're going to study or not. Is that about right? Yeah, that's about right. You just it's like like I said, you got to have your own plan. So you, you just got to know how to balance everything out with working out and studying, getting your rest and everything, taking care of your body. So, yeah, once you get your plan, it, it's everything smooth selling. You know? That's awesome. I, and you, I mean, it, it sounds like you got your head on straight because being able to do what you did in college with school and football and everything and just the way you're acclimating already to the NFL level, it's pretty impressive, I got to tell you. Oh, yeah. Miss, Mississippi State prepared me and also like the ladies in my life really helped me be the man who I am. So it really helped mom, grab sisters, all of them prepare me for this opportunity. So I'm thankful for them all. That's right. Behind every great man is an even better woman or multiple women. That's for sure. All right. Well, definitely. That's true. Um, so you mentioned Mississippi State. Your college defensive coordinator was Zach Arnett. Yeah. I saw a quote. He said that you played every linebacker position for the team during your career. Is that right? Yeah, I- yeah, outside, inside, I did it all. I tried to get a nose guard one time. He wouldn't let me. <laughs> That's hilarious. Um, but I guess does that does that experience playing all those different linebacker positions, does that kind of give you like a mental edge coming into the NFL knowing that, you know, you could be the coach's answer at multiple different spots on the field? Oh, yeah. Because, like, me personally, um, I think it was after 2019, which was before COVID, we had got a new staff. Um, I had made it like I had made it like my job that I was gonna know every every uh, every um uh, like job description of the linebackers like Sam, Mike, Will, everything they do. So like after I, after I learned all, all that, I became a switch army knight for Mississippi State. Like I was playing on special team. I played on every special team wherever they needed me. And then line, I get in the linebacker, play each position. If another player went down, and then throughout my like throughout my rest of my years. I still continue to play every position, even when I was starting at Mike. So uh, really, just knowing all that, really just knowing all that, and me being able to be like a Swiss Army knife, I think it really like um, I think it really helped me come to like coming in the league and stuff. But the coaches, you know, uh, we usually got for this, that, anything, because we know he's gonna get the job done. He, you know, we know he's gonna do what he's gonna do. So and that's truthful. So yeah. Yeah, and that was just whenever I was looking into you and doing research and stuff and watching some tape, and it was like I don't. You know, some of the the draft scouting stuff that you read, it, it, a lot of places I read kind of had you pegged as more of just like a an inside linebacker. But I kept thinking, y- you just seem more versatile than that. First of all, like you could, I mean, you're a tackling machine, but you can get after the quarterback. I mean, how many, I, I should bring it up here. How many sacks did you have in college? You had a ton. What was it, 21? Yeah, yeah like 21 or something. So yeah, somewhere around there. Yeah, you had what, 10 last year and six the year before and five the year before that. So that's 21 in the last three years. That's that's pretty good. Yeah. <laughs> and I feel like your coverage skills are good too. Yeah, I mean, I, they good, but I ain't like get the coverage that much this past year. Right. That's really, um, that's really like the feedback I was getting from like scouts and stuff like over my, over like um, pro day and stuff like come behind. Like they didn't see, they had to go back to 2022, 20, 2021 to see me recover just because like this past year, uh, um, coach wanted to use me more as like, um, Rushing the quarterback, spy guy. So yeah, I mean, I I I wasn't I wasn't knocking it. Whatever, <laughs> whatever I had to do. So I, I mean, I'm I'm a team player. So yeah, yeah. I think that's one important thing for people to understand is just because like if you're reading you know scouting reports and stuff and they're saying oh this guy's cover skills aren't you know all that great or whatever maybe they're being knocked. It's like he probably wasn't asked to do that as much in college. We talked to Aiden Robbins a couple of weeks ago about his receiving ability out of the backfield, and he said I just wasn't asked to do it at BYU. And yeah, it's like, that so, makes total sense. Yeah, that's how it be. I mean, you got other players around you, and then like 
me, me personally, I was, uh, I was the main person on on defense that blitzed a lot. So they used me for more packages, and then they dropped the other two linebackers. Sometimes we dropped out the linemen, and they blitzed linebackers. So yeah, which makes sense because I mean, getting after the quarterback was. I, I understand why they used you that way, <laughs> for sure. I got a hate for quarterback, so yeah. <laughs> well, I can't wait to see that this year. I seriously, I think that you got a great opportunity to get on the field early. I think that you have an opportunity to make a big impact early. I don't know. We've been talking about you on the show, you know, since you've been drafted, you know, to the Browns, and just saying, I, keep an eye on Watson because I, I really think that he's going to pop off the screen a lot earlier than many fans are expecting. I plan to. So I plan to make a big impact. Wow. First, first, the first time I touched the field. Love to hear it. Love to hear it. Um, so I guess we'll just kind of wrap up here, like the last couple questions, but I just want to talk to you about Martin Emerson because yeah. he was your teammate at Mississippi State for over three years. Is that right? Yeah, three years. Okay. So I guess just what is your relationship like with Emerson and you know how has that relationship impacted your transition into the NFL to this point? Uh, me and him, I always had a good relationship. You know, um, obviously we play together. He he obviously had put in good work for me here, there, and I had talked with Coach Dev. Coach Dev had said that he was talking good about me. So uh, really, uh, me and him I always had a relationship. And like for speaking on the field, like he always held me accountable. I always hold, I always held him accountable when we was up at Mississippi State. And he know when I like uh, when I'm leading defense, he he always echoed right behind me. So yeah, I mean. uh We've always had a good relationship, um, but like the league for coming in the league, he really just been showing me ropes and like just giving me like the um, spills and stuff on the ends and outs, how to how to move and stuff, uh, like recovering my body and everything. Really, just um, he he laid it out to me, plain and simple, like how the defense run, and I was like, yeah, yeah I can't I can't wait to get into it. <laughs> it fit me perfect, so yeah, that's awesome, man. I mean. Playing that linebacker spot, and you already mentioned like behind a, a defensive line that's got Miles Garrett, and we've we got Zadarius back, and Tomlinson, and you know Mo and Shelby Harris, and all these guys. Mike Hall coming in. I think you. Got, I mean, the last year the defense was overall they were the number one defense in the league. I know on the road struggled a little bit, uh, but at home just absolute domination. Uh-huh. And cannot wait to see you guys out there doing it again this year, and even even better. Than it was last year. Go we'll crazy this year, Mark. Definitely. <laughs> All right, man. Well, I appreciate you. Hey, real quick, is there have you gotten a chance to like get out and about up there at all? No, I went to the baseball game. Oh, did you? Yeah, okay. Yes, yeah, so I really ain't went out. I might, I might go out today. Just go look around and see the town and stuff. So yeah. Was that the game the uh, the other guys threw out the first pitch or? Yeah, Zach. Zach, okay. exactly. I might. Yeah. So, that's yeah. that's really cool, man. All the rookies had went, so yeah, that was that was a good experience. Well, that's cool, man. I'm I'm glad to hear you guys are enjoying it, and I'm you know glad to hear you're excited to be in Cleveland, be part of the team, be a Cleveland Brown, and we are very excited to have you on the team. Yes, sir. I'm looking forward to this season, most definitely. All right, man. Can't wait to see you and Emerson out there together, and just everybody else is going to be a ton of fun. And I really appreciate you taking some time, jumping on the podcast, and just giving our listeners and viewers a chance to get to know you a little better. I appreciate y'all for having me on. All right, man. Good luck this season. I appreciate it. So again, huge, huge thank you to Buki Watson for joining me today on the podcast, coming in, giving me some of his time. I know things are busy. Things are crazy. I mean, this guy, just like all the rookies, they are trying so hard to just get a grasp on the playbook and the flow and the routine of the NFL of professional football. So really appreciate him taking some time out of his busy schedule to join us, to give you guys a little more insight into him and to get to know him a little better. And I cannot do this show without a humongo shout out to my boy, Gage freaking Tucker from the Patreon dog pack member. He has been in there for years now. Gage, thank you so much. Gage helped coordinate and facilitate that interview and hooking us up with Buki Watson. So thank you for putting us in touch and thank you for everything you do for the show. Gage Tucker, you are quite truly the man. And if you want to be in the dog pack, in the Patreon group, the private discord with everybody, just like Gage is, head to jointhedogs.com, become an official dog pack member over there on our Patreon page to get you access to that private discord. And it just gets you 
this this really nice big group of this online community. It's really like we say all the time. It's like an online Browns backers group. It really is. There, we got people in there from all over the world, and you know, whenever you're watching games on Sundays and you're in a, I don't know, you're in Minnesota and you're watching the Browns and you know, nobody around is a Browns fan. Maybe your girlfriend, your wife, your husband, whatever, they're not really big into football or they don't care about the Browns like you do. This group, I mean, we are in the discord the entire game and you get to vent, you get to give your reactions, you get to commiserate and celebrate with everybody else in that group. It's so much fun. So check it out. There's a seven day free trial when you first join and you know, if you don't want to stick around, you don't have to. And if you do, we'd love to have you. So that is jointhedogs.com, become an official dog pack member. I know a lot of you guys, when it came to the linebacker room after last season, heading into the off season, it was like the main position that a lot of people were just screaming about saying, we've got to, we've got to address this position. I know a lot of people were bummed about losing Sione Taki Taki. He played so well for the Browns while he was here. Uh, I think a lot of people were bummed about losing Anthony Walker, but I I just think the injuries, you know, it, it's unfortunate because I loved Anthony Walker when he was here. I thought he played very well for us. But I really do believe, it, it, you guys let me know in the comments if you agree or disagree, but I think bring the way, what the Browns have done at linebacker could be sneaky, freaking, upside high ceiling good this year with Jordan Hicks. And they obviously we still got JOK, who's just a machine out there. And now we bring in Buki Watson. We've got Devin Bush in that room too. And not don't forget about Tony Fields. I think Tony Fields does a really nice job in his role on the defense at the linebacker position as well. So I, I'm not concerned one bit about the linebacker position. In fact, I'm excited. I think that it has the potential to be one of our most productive units. And that's saying something considering who we've got in our secondary, who we've got on our defensive line. But I just, I really do believe that we're going to see some really, really great things out of these guys. And, you know, having Buki come in here to play alongside a guy like Jordan Hicks, who's done nothing over his career other than just tackle guys and just be a great leader on his defenses. So that's a great addition to the team. And we do have really high hopes. You know, there's good upside for Devin Bush to reclaim the early career that he was having when he first came in the NFL. And that talent's still there. It's just, can the Browns get it back out of him? And I think that there's a really good chance that happens. You factor in, we, we I don't even need to mention JOK. JOK is JOK and he's going to do JOK things. He is a freaking dog. He's a stud. But Buki Watson has an opportunity here to come in and just absolutely contribute from day one. So very excited about him and about this linebacking core overall. So without further ado, I'm going to wrap this thing up. I hope you guys have a great week and I hope you enjoyed the interview with Buki Watson. Please drop your thoughts, reactions, anything, comments, questions, whatever you've got into the comments and we will make sure we get to you guys. We'll talk to everybody if we can. We love hearing from you. And until I see you guys in the next one, let's go Browns. Thanks for listening to another episode of the Dogs Podcast. Make sure you subscribe on YouTube and follow us on Twitter at the Dogs Podcast. Get your thoughts on the show at thedogspodcast.com. This episode is brought to you by Danger Coffee. Browns fans, we talk about how Danger Coffee is made free from mold toxins that are in 45% of the world's coffee, but that's not all that Danger Coffee has to offer. Mineral and nutrient deficiencies are a big deal. They make you feel sick, tired, stressed, and they can give you brain fog. These deficiencies negatively affect your immune system, your digestion, sleep, metabolism. Have you ever wondered why you get an initial burst from your coffee? but then you get that little crash not long after, Danger Coffee's patent-pending process remineralizes your body with more than 50 trace minerals and electrolytes, leaving you more energized, engaged, powerful. These micronutrients enter the cells to boost performance. They bind to toxins to provide detoxification support. I know that sounds like a lot, but the bottom line, guys, is minerals matter. And most of us really don't get enough of them on a daily basis. Danger Coffee delivers micronutrients, plus it gives you access to the minerals you already have. 
Head to DangerCoffee.com. Use our code DOGS, D-A-W-G-S, for 10% off your order. And that code can be used over and over. So you get 10% off every order you make using code DOGS. It's time to start every day off with a cup of coffee that gets you going and actually keeps you going. DangerCoffee.com. Code DOGS.